just test that this isn't going to cut my head off because, oh. Hi guys, let's try this again. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you would know that I tried to film this already and that my camera decided to drop after I tested it and so the whole video was just of here down. So uh, yeah, we're going to try and film this again. I just got home from a training course so I have a nice little crystal name tag on. But uh, yeah, let's try this again, shall we? Those of you that are new here, my name is Crystal and this is Bond Book Reviews, where I put out weekly bookish content. And today we are going to do a book tag. Before we jump into the book tag, make sure that you subscribe so you get notifications whenever I put out new videos each week. And be sure to hit that little notification bell as well so that you do actually get the notifications because I've been informed that even my subscribers are not getting notifications that my content is coming up because they're not hitting that little notification bell. So make sure that you grab that one as well so that you know when I put out new content every week. I try and post every Friday, but this week it's coming up a little bit late because of some technical difficulties and uh, my sister coming to visit. So here we go. Let's dive in. Today I am doing the book tag, which is the bookshelf time capsule. This was created by Jesse at Jesse the Reader. I will link his channel down below. I absolutely adore his channel. He was one of the first booktubers that I started following and watching on a regular basis. And he's created this book tag very similarly from some other book tags that have been created for the book time capsule. But this is the one that I'm specifically using and the questions he's asked for the question that I'm going to answer. So let's dive into it and get into question one. So question one is to give an overview of your shelves. So my shelves are the basic bitch, everyone has them, Billy bookshelves from Ikea. And I absolutely love them. Before moving into this new house, I had a small brown shelf that had three little shelves on it. And that was all I had available in the old house we were living in. And then we moved into this new place where I have this entire wall. <laughs> full of shelves now. So I have two of the thick ones either side and then a skinny one in the middle, which mainly is just for my plants and a couple of um, series. This is my entire unread TBR, like my unread shelf. My red shelf is out in the living room. That old shelf that I had, the small brown shelf that only had three shelves to kind of fit books on, that used to be my TBR shelf. Since moving into this house, I filled this up pretty damn quick. <laughs> so the bigger your shelf you get, the more you put books on it. So you got to be careful. I have these three shelves in here and then I have my red shelf out in the living room and then I also have my book cart. On my book cart, my top shelf is my TBR for the month, which is the books that have been chosen to me from my pick pong. The second shelf is the books that I've read so far that month may potentially still need to be reviewed or that have been reviewed and are just waiting to do a wrap up. And then the third shelf on my book cart I use for any books that have been sent to me from publishers that still need to be read and reviewed. The next question is which shelf on your bookshelf is your favourite? I don't pick favourites. I love all of my books equally, but if I had to pick one shelf that I like a little bit more than the rest, it would probably have to be this one here. Now this is my planter that says, home is where my plants are. I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see it. And um, I love it. I scored that from uh, the local plant store when we moved into this house. We went and checked it out and I picked that one up. And then I also have my Percy Jackson series on there. So I've recently started to love the Percy Jackson series and I think it's going to be one of those series I will love for a really long time. So that's probably why that's my favourite shelf. So next question is, do you keep every book you ever read or do you ditch the ones you didn't like? Well, let's just say in dream world I would keep every book that I ever read. But... Because I have limited space, I would rather have shelves full of books that I haven't read than shelves full of books that I've read and didn't like. So at the moment, I only keep 
the books that I gave four or five star re- uh, ratings to or that I feel someone else in my life would like. And they're all out of my small red shelf. But as for in here, this is all just my unread books. I don't fill the shelf with anything other than my read, unread books. As soon as I read a book, if I love it, it goes straight on my red shelf. If I don't love it, it gets donated, it gets gifted, it gets put in a giveaway or I sell it or something happens to it. It ends up on someone else's shelf because I would rather be on someone's shelf that is going to get something out of it or that wants to read it rather than me hoarding it and never going to read it again because I didn't like it. This next one's a fun one. <laughs> what do you do when your bookshelves fill up? This is a new experience for me. I never once had full bookshelves ever in my life until moving into this house. <laughs> and now I can honestly say that these shelves are still not full. Stay with me. They are quite full and I probably can't fit any more books in the way that they are, but if I needed to fit more books on here, I could make it happen. So I haven't put my top of like there's like extenders I have for up the top I haven't put them up there and I also have the ability to kind of like stack things a little differently at the moment I have them all one way so I could definitely fit more books on here if I needed to but I haven't experienced a full shelf yet the next question is do you have an organization method or is there an organization method you have seen that you would like to try my shelves have always been in some kind of organization, whether it be color, size, alphabetized, or at the moment, I have it alphabetized by publisher. There's a few different organization methods. I hate to say that word because I don't think they're very organized, but there's a few different organization methods that I've wanted to try, but I don't think I could handle on my shelf. The first one is from Highback Order, and she did a shelf where she wrapped like most of if not all of her books in one colored wrapping paper and so her shelf looked very very like uniform similar she had like this nice like dark gothic kind of library look going and I love the idea of that but that's not me I love the bright colors of my books I am very very attracted to colorful books and so for me that's not my kind of style but I would love to see my shelves look like that but I probably would never do it because I wouldn't want to waste the time and money on something I probably wouldn't keep. The other method that I would also love to try but also don't think would work for me in the way that I currently have my shelves and how many books I have is when you turn the book around and have like your unread books facing out like this that wouldn't work for me because this is my entire unread shelf. So every sh every book on this shelf would be like that. And I wouldn't know where to find anything. I find it hard enough to find things as is. I don't need to make it more complicated. And then I'm like, oh, well, why don't I just do like what I want to read for the next year back the front? Like maybe I pick like 100 books and do them back the front or whatever. I mean, I could try it, but i probably change it after like a week because I can't help myself. And that leads into question six, which is how often do you reorganize your shelves? Uh, prior to moving into this house and having just the one shelf, I reorganized it only when I needed to, when I had a giant big book haul or when I was running out of space and needed to find a way to fit them all in. Most of the time it just stayed rainbow shelf the whole time, didn't really reorganize it or change it in any way. As long as it fit on the shelf, I didn't really care. Fast forward, to when I move into this house and I've lived here for like almost four months and I've changed the shelf four times already. Now granted two of those changes were because I did my book Christmas tree and I decided to build a giant a giant book throne because Anthony got deliveries of book of chairs for his study and they were in this like box that was shaped like a throne and I was like well the only logical thing to do is to put books all around it and get a photo of me sitting in a book crown but I didn't realize how many books it would take to fill um, and make said book crown so my entire shelf was practically in his study so then I needed to just reorganize anything every everything anyway but mostly I only reorganize if I run out of space or if I get a giant book haul and I can't just try and squeeze in the few books that I've acquired so the next question is is there a shelf 
on your bookshelves that bothers you no matter what you do with it, no matter how much you move it around, you cannot get it right. Yes, yes there is. And it's a really stupid reason. The book that I need to put up here to make this full so that it's like all condensed is too thick to fit on that spot up there. And no matter how I organize my shelves, whether it be rainbow, color, alphabetized, there is always one shelf where the next book I need to go in that position, whether it be alphabetized, color, whatever it is, doesn't fit nicely in the shelves. And there's always one shelf, just always one. And it bugs the living daylights out of me because it's either too tight or too loose. And then you've got like these loose shelves or like I try and squeeze it in and it like all your books get like condensed and then you like you try and pull one book out and the whole shelf almost falls on you. Small world problems, I know. Oh, it's fucking hot today. Question number eight <laughs> is what color dominates your shelves? I have to say that that would most likely be black and blue. I'm really sad about how little amount of pink and purple books I had on my shelf. I have since acquired a few more purple books, which make me a little happier. But the reason why I changed from rainbow to other options is when I did my rainbow shelves, it was like three shelves of blue books and then like two purple books. And I was like, this is depressing. I need more purple books. I need more pink books. I need more yellow books. There was always another color I wanted more of. So at least this way, they kind of like distributed so much that I don't tell that there's one particular color encompassing my entire shelf. Question number nine is, what is the most damaged book on your shelf? And tell us the little story about how it got that damaged. Well, I when I first filmed this, for the first time, it took me about 10 minutes to actually find a damaged book on my shelf because a lot of these have been gifted to me or I have one of them in giveaways or I have bought them secondhand from book fairs where they've just been in like great condition. But there is one book that I bought from a secondhand store that is not in the best condition. And that is Clive Barker's Weave World. Now, my dad recommended this to me, and I'm really, really excited to read it. It is a chunker. It is on my big book list. But sadly, it has... Let's show you. Sadly, it has a rip in the dust jacket at the top. And then in the bottom bit, it's got rips in the dust jacket. And this random star stamp that just makes no logical sense to me. And then it's obviously nice and, like, tatted along the bottom. It's, it's, it's well read. So yeah, my worst damaged book is definitely Weave World by Clive Barker. Now number 10, I honestly can't answer. That is, do you have any books on your shelf that have major printing errors? Of all the books that I have read that are on my red shelf, I can honestly say no. As for the 330 books on this unread shelf, I can't tell you. None that I am aware of. So question number 11 is, what is the ugliest spine on your shelf? that sticks out like a sore thumb. Please comment down below if there's any that you see that stick out, but the one to me that sticks out that I have to like hide behind a couple of candles down down here because it just, it drives me mental, is this one, which is Empress of Mijak, which is God Speaker Book One by Karen Miller. It is an old library edition that I got secondhand from like, I don't even know where. I think maybe like a, um, op shop or a book fair or somewhere and it's got this like ugly ass plastic on it that just makes it look terrible like if I can get in close I will show you like it's what is that it's like not even laminated well it's just done in this like shitty way that like it just looks looks terrible so that's the ugliest spine that jumps out for me but let me know if you see any others that you think jump out more. So the next question is, if you don't already have your dream shelves, what would your dream shelves look like? I'm not going to lie. I am very, very excited and very, very happy about the fact that I have the ability to have the space and the money and the means to have shelves like this. And I know that there is many people that would be grateful to have these kind of shelves. But my dream shelves, if I didn't have money or waste as an issue would be to replace every single paperback on these shelves with hardback books so they're all the same size and all look beautiful and uniform. And my others would be to make sure that I have all of the Canterbury classics because they look stunning on your shelves. 
And the third thing would be to have bookshelves with like a ladder on it that kind of wrap around the room. And I would love, like ultimately love, a little like hidden reading room where like I move one of my books and it like opens up and I've got this like cool, like amazing couch with like fantastic lighting. But, you know, that's just the dream. And if I've made it happen, fantastic. But I don't think I could justify replacing perfect little books I have on my shelves with hardbacks if I was going to waste the paperback. So probably won't ever happen. Question number 13. I think my sister's here. Maybe not. I think I still got time. Okay. Question number 13 is what is the tallest book on your shelf? Now, when I first filmed this, I didn't really know, and I had to compare like a bunch of books to each other, but I think we discovered that it was The Horse Whisperer by Nicholas Evans, which is only just taller than Jean M. Ayoel's The Shelter of Stone. Only just, though. But, yeah, I think that's the tallest one I own. I don't think I have anything taller than that. Question number 14 is what is the smallest book on your shelf? And that would have to be, where did I put it? Hold on, it's down. And that would have to be Storyteller, which is 100 Poem Letters by Morgan Harper Nichols. And it is a little itty bitty 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 book, which is only about 107 pages long, and it is all just little poems. I was gifted this one from a friend, and I'm still yet to read it. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? The smallest book on your shelf and you still haven't got to it. I guess size really does matter, right? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Oh, man. Question number 15 is your most prized possession. This was really hard for me to pick because I love all of my books equally and all of them have a story to tell about how I got them, who gifted them to me, where I found them, what I was doing when I found them, how long I've been waiting for them. Like... When you're a book collector and when you have books that are going to make you feel a certain way, it's really, really hard to just pick one. But my most prized possession that I can think of is the tie between two for two different reasons, and I'll show you why. The first one is the grandest bookshop in the world. This was a book that I got when I was away on a weekend for my mum's 60th birthday. We had a party and my dad decided to help me with my bookstagram account, dress up, wearing a top hat so he could get a photo with this book ready for me to post a review whenever I choose to read it. And now every time I look at this book, it just reminds me of my dad and it's one of my prized possessions. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And it just brings back so many memories. But if I'm going purely on aesthetics rather than the actual memories that it brings back to me, it would be my hard copy version of A Heart So Fierce and Broken. It is the only book I own that has a beautiful embossing on the front and I think it's absolutely astoundingly beautiful. I love the colour green, it is my favourite colour, so I have to admit that this is definitely high up on that list of most prized possessions. Until Jack Heath or J. Kristoff signs one of my books and then that will be my most prized possession. <laughs> now the final question of this fantastic bookshelf capsule is... What is one book that you stare at and it just takes you instantly back to the first moment that you read it, experienced it, or purchased it? For me, this has to be Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. This book, if you can't see by how yellowed and damaged this is, I read it probably about 15 times, maybe 20 Every time I had like a crisis during puberty, I reread this book. And I reread it probably five years ago when I was from about 25 or so, I think. And I re experienced it, and it just took me instantly back to that moment of being a teen who has no idea where their life is going or what puberty is going to mean for them, and the friendship groups that you have, and the memories that you share. And so every single time I see this book, it just takes me back to the first moment that I read it and how much it left an impact on my life. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks for being patient with this video coming out late because of everything that happened. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give me a like if you liked this video and want more of it. And be sure to leave a comment down below so that my video and channel can continue to grow so I can show you more bookish content. Thanks so much, guys. Happy reading.